More signs of end times in Israel, who invades, when, and what happens. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're turning our attention to Ezekiel 38 as we explore prophetic insights into the signs of the end times. Last time, we discussed the certainty that our present world will come to an end and how Jesus' disciples asked him the signs that precedes his return. We saw that the first sign was the reassembling of the Jewish people back to their homeland and which took place in 1948, as we discussed in our last video. You can go and watch it, if you have not done so, using the link below. While you are there, please hit notification, subscribe, like and share for the word of God to grow and prevail, Acts 19 verse 20. Today, we will explore another sign, which involves widespread hostility toward the Jewish people. This hostility is depicted in a prophecy found in Ezekiel chapter 38. Before we explore Ezekiel's prophecy, it's crucial to note the current rise in animosity and hatred toward the Jewish people. The prophecy anticipates a future scenario where this hostility intensifies, leading to a global coalition attacking Israel with the aim of eradicating the Jewish population, a key sign of the impending end times according to Ezekiel. Look at some of the recent headlines in our world today. And unfortunately, tragically, I had many to choose from. But we are seeing a dramatic and widespread rise in anti-Semitism throughout our world. Just follow me now as we read. The Guardian. Record number of hate incidents against British Jews reported, says anti-Semitism charity. Jewish people in Britain have experienced the worst wave of hate incidents in modern times with more than 1,000 recorded after the Hamas massacres in Israel, experts encountering anti-Semitism have said. The Community Security Trust said, since October 7, 1,019 hate incidents have been recorded across the UK, the date Hamas launched a series of attacks on Israel that left 1,400 dead, and more than 200 people taken hostage. The figures include 47 assaults, with other incidents including the targeting of children and schools. In the same period last year there were 160 anti-Semitic incidents, meaning there had been a 537% increase, according to CST data. Reuters headline back on November 1st reads, Open hatred of Jews surges globally, inflamed by Gaza war. A couple of quotes from that article, in countries where figures are available from police and other civil society groups, including the United States, Britain, France, Germany, and South Africa, the pattern is clear, the number of anti-Semitic incidents has gone up since October 7, the day of the invasion, by several hundred percent compared with the same period last year. Another quote from that article states, the most chilling anti-Semitic incident globally was the storming of an airport in Russia's Dagestan region by an enraged crowd looking for Jews to harm after a flight arrived from Tel Aviv. All these happenings prompted the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to declare the following. In fighting Hamas and the Iranian axis of terror, Israel is fighting the enemies of civilization itself. Victory over these enemies begins with moral clarity. As long as Hamas's use of Palestinian human shields result in the international community blaming Israel. We are seeing a dramatic rise in anti-Semitism all over our world and it points to a future event that Ezekiel describes in chapters 38 and 39. Let's begin reading Ezekiel 38 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all its troops, the house of Tagarma from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you. This describes a coalition of forces using their ancient names, referring to areas that exist today. These forces are destined to invade Israel in the end. Who is the invading coalition? Let's identify them. Firstly, Gog, the person leading this invasion, not a country but a leader, the general at the forefront. Next. Magog, representing countries in Central Asia, 
many from the former Soviet Union, as seen in the modern names listed. Moving on, Rash refers to Russia, located in the southern part. Meek, Tubal, Gomer, and Tarma point to places in modern-day Turkey. Persia corresponds to Iran, Ethiopia to Sudan, and Libya to Libya. Ezekiel's prophecy foretells these nations, in the end, attacking the Jews in their ancient homeland of Israel. Now, let's take a look at this on a map to get a clearer picture. The highlighted areas in black represent the regions mentioned in Ezekiel's prophecy, and the red dot is Israel. I want to highlight a couple of key points. Firstly, observe how Israel is significantly outnumbered in this invasion, facing multiple countries against its one small territory. Secondly, note that many of these coalition forces are strongly against Israel even in today's context. Another noteworthy sign is the existing close alliances among these nations. Ezekiel, over 2,000 years ago, predicted the convergence of these countries under the leadership of a figure known as Gog. Their collective aim, as foretold, is to attempt the eradication of Israel. Now, the question is, when is this going to take place? I'm just going to admit up front that there are differences of opinion here. This passage, however, does give us some very important indications. For example, let me read to you verses 8 through 11 of this chapter. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, another way to say in the end times, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. You're going to come against this group of Jews who are now back in their homeland after being gone for a long period of time. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. Dwell safely, that's important. You will descend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day, it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, speaking of the invaders. Thoughts will arise in your mind and you'll make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Back to the question, when will this coalition of forces invade Israel? One indicator we can pinpoint is the timing of the invasion by considering the placement of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. These chapters, describing the battle, fall between chapter 37, illustrating the restoration of Israel, symbolized by the Valley of Dry Bones, and chapters 40 through 48, which depict worship in the Millennial Kingdom post the Tribulation. This time frame positions the invasion between two significant events, the establishment of Israel as a nation in 1948, coinciding with the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 37, and the Millennium, occurring after the conclusion of the seven years of tribulation. The second indicator from this passage suggests that the invasion will occur when the Jews in their ancient homeland are experiencing a period of peace. This aligns with the possibility of the invasion taking place in the first half of the tribulation period. The seven-year tribulation period begins with a peace treaty brokered by the Antichrist between Israel and its adversaries, initially bringing an illusion of peace to Israel. However, this treaty lasts only three and a half years. As of today, and consistently since 1948, Israel has not known true peace, as discussed in a previous video. Yet, there will come a day when peace prevails, catching Israel off guard during the onset of this invasion. Now, let's examine what will take place during this invasion. Having covered the who and when, let's delve into the what. Continuing with Ezekiel 38 verses 18 to 23, and it will come to pass at the same time when God comes up against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show its face, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely, in that day, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, 
and on the many peoples who were with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So, what's the scenario here? This passage outlines how God will intervene to rescue Israel, employing four main strategies. God's rescue plan involves powerful weapons, such as a significant earthquake. It includes sowing discord among the invading troops, as outlined in the passage. The text also indicates that disease will contribute to the downfall of this invading army. Additionally, there will be extraordinary natural elements, including torrential rain, hailstones, and burning sulfur. God's intervention is set to supernaturally shield Israel and overcome the formidable coalition of forces. In Ezekiel 39 verse 4, it's foretold, you and your troops will fall on the mountains of Israel. I'll give you to birds and beasts for devouring. You'll collapse in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. The mounting anti-Semitism will ultimately be defeated by God. The Bible assures us that God will completely destroy those opposing Israel. Today, we witness signs pointing towards this impending event. Before we wrap up, I want to share a couple of takeaways for the church. What do passages like these teach us? There's much to highlight. Firstly, this passage teaches us that Satan opposes everything God stands for. Church, pay attention, Satan is against anything God loves or desires to flourish. If God values it, Satan hates it and aims to destroy it. Finally, when you have God on your side, when you align with God, you're on the winning side. In this upcoming battle, as I illustrated on the mount, Israel will be vastly outnumbered and overwhelmed. Yet, let me recite Ezekiel 38 verse 23 for you, so, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known among many nations. Then they will acknowledge that I am the Lord. God bless you all.